let's do something different. Instead of painting every miniature in the exact same way, I'm gonna paint a little five-man squad with really unique features. I want to make every model look different from the others, so they're more recognizable. So here I have on my table five minis, Cadian troopers, and a sergeant with an automatic gun. I'm going to paint them all in this sort of similar colors, not completely different uniforms from different regiments. They're all gonna look fairly similar, but they still are going to look unique enough that you can figure out who is who when they're on the tabletop. Gives the unit more character. So first up, we're gonna use some Militarum Green. I'm just gonna start easy with this guy, painting all his clothing in Militarum Green. And uh, this is a nice contrast paint. I'm using Wraithbone as the base, and it will give nice green color. And then after that, we can use different washes to make it look different, and then also maybe add a little bit of camo. Or maybe this guy doesn't wear any camo. We'll see. First, let's get some Militarum Green on all five models. So, what did I get so far? Over here, I got a guy whose pant and jacket are both green. I got one with green pants. I left the jacket without color, but I painted his helmet. One has a green jacket, white pants still, and a green helmet. One has green pants, green armor, and here the sergeant, just the green pants. Time for the next color, and it's gonna be snake bite leather. So for this guy, I'm gonna paint the straps, and I think I'll do the backpack as well. And I'll just keep moving through the unit again and picking out bits and pieces that I think would look good in brown. So I got a nice mix now of greens and browns, but the green obviously still is the main color for pretty much all the minis. You can see it's the dominant color and I want to have green as the dominant color, except for the sergeant. He really is a bit more brown than green, uh, but that's okay. It makes him stand out out of the unit. It's easier to locate him, easier to remove him when he dies. Now it's time for some Skeleton Horde, the color that I would use if I was just painting Kalians, like you can see in the video here. And I'm going to use that for, I don't know, some of the leftover bits and pieces that I think should be this sort of canvas color. Could be some of the straps, could be some of the armor as well. Maybe one of the jackets will get this color. I really want to give the impression that this is like a band of veterans that have been in combat for a long time now. and. Maybe they've come together from all different kinds of detachments and they're now fighting together because all their units lost loads of men and they kind of pushed together into one unit now. Or maybe they got their gear supplied at different times and they have different orders or different environments that they were fighting in. And maybe in those environments it made sense to have one color and now they're all getting sort of bunched up together they're still on the last stand in one environment. And that's why they all have these mixed gear. They pick up whatever they can use. They don't stick with what they had when they first got out of basic training or when they were first deployed. They just try to make do with what's available. Okay, Skeleton Horde is done and it's time for some Black Templar. And I'm using the black to unify these different models a bit more. Because if I paint all the boots black and all the guns black, and some other parts black as well, but at least the guns and the boots, then that's a sort of unifying element throughout the army. It doesn't matter what sort of clothes they're wearing, what color of the armor is, this one element is one color, and it ties it all back together again. So, just some black Templar on the gun and the boots for sure, but I'm also going to take this opportunity to pretty much cover everything that I haven't covered with the paint yet. So, this guy, for example, he has green clothes and some leather straps and a leather bag, but everything else that's still white, I'm now gonna cover in black. So that's his armor, that's his boots, the gun, of course, and these little parts here on the back too. And then we'll see what I'm gonna do next, because after that it's time to make stuff a bit dirtier and a bit more unique. See, maybe a little bit of camouflage here and there, some dirt, some blood. Let's uh, first do this. So with the guns done, now all the colors are blocked in except for the skin. And I'm leaving the skin to last because in the next few steps, I'm definitely gonna hit the skin with some other paints. And then I can just clean it all up at once and then apply contrast paint and be done with it. But take a look what we have here. So I got five guys here, they're now all blocked in. They got mainly greens, the guns are all black. And then there's some leather in there and some canvas and some desert tones. 
Now the reason all the guns are black is that it ties everything together. You can have other characters, for example, or you can have a squad of Krieg. And if you paint their guns black, it's sort of a unifying piece in each unit and makes it look like still one single army instead of completely random stuff, even though we want to have a bit more character in this unit. So now next up, I'm going to make all the metals look more metallic. So the gun, the helmets, the shoulder pads, I'm going to give them a light dry brush of Iron Warriors. And Iron Warriors is a dark metallic paint that is great for just giving it a little bit of metallic shine. So start with this guy and just dry brush from the top down and make all the metallic parts look metallic. And this is something you really have to do if you paint with contrast paints only, because contrast paints, they all make the, uh, the, the texture and the material of the things you paint look the same. It all has sort of the same shine to it. And that's just not the case in real life. Metals look different from cloth and they look different from skin. And so by dry brushing this, it's rough, but you immediately see that there are parts that are metallic and parts that are not metallic. And if you finish all these miniatures like this, I think you already have a decent looking army. But of course, I'm going to keep going a bit more, add some more interest and maybe even paint some camo. So now there's a little bit of metallic shine on the minis. Look at this guy, for example. The gun is shining, the helmet is a bit shiny, so are the shoulder pads, and a little bit his armor as well, even though you can't really see it. Now, I said I would paint a little bit of camo, so let's do that next. And for camo, you need about four colors. You need a dark brown, and in this case, I took Ryanx Hide. You need a sand color. This I took Sandry Dust. Then you need a green. Uh, I'm taking Castellan Green because it's pretty close to the contrast paint I used before. You could also use something like Deathcore Drab, as long as it's pretty dark, not a bright green color. And then I have a gray here, and this is Caven Blight Dinge. You don't need to have these exact colors, but you need to have pretty dark colors because they need to cover in one stroke, and this will make it stand out more against the light green of the armor that we painted now. So here I have a guy, he has green pants and a green jacket, and I figured let's turn the pants into camo pants and then we'll see if we do the jacket as well. This takes a little bit of time, but it's really fun to add some camo. So over here, we start with the Rhinox hide with the dark brown. And I'm drawing sort of horizontal scribbles. You can do just a horizontal line like that, or you make a sort of V shape going up and down. That works too. Or you make a V shape up, down and then continue that upward stroke a bit so you have sort of i don't know a fish i don't know how to call it and keep moving around the model don't use too much of the dark brown and you don't want this to completely paint over the green pants you still want to make sure that the base green is visible and i just keep going like this all over the pants and then we'll take the next color Next up is the gray. And now the trick is not to paint completely over the little brown spots, but paint right next to them. Cover the edge of the spot, but not the whole thing. So for example, here you have a brown spot. I'm just going to go right next to it and make similar shapes. Try to keep painting horizontally, not vertically. Somehow this looks just better. And again, we make these sort of V shapes or upside down V shapes and touching the brown, but not covering it completely and especially don't paint through it. Don't paint a brown blotch and then a gray line through it. It looks weird, it looks strange. Uh, stay up above it, next to it, under it, but not straight through it. Next up is the sand color and we just keep doing the same thing. Don't paint all over the patches you already painted. Try to paint right next to it. And with the sand color, I'm trying to paint smaller blotches. Don't paint these big blotches. That's what we did with the brown and with the grays. Now you can even just put a little dot, for example, here. That's a nice dot for sand color. And just keep moving all around the mini and keep adding more and more as you like. Finally, we'll use the green to get a bit more green back into this camo pattern. Finally, the dark green, and I'm using this to clean up whatever this doesn't look right and to make sure there's still a lot of green in the camo pattern. I want this to look like a woodland camo, greenish, and not too much brown or grays or too much sand color in there. So we just keep doing the same as we did before. Try to draw horizontal lines and try not to go all the way through another blotch that you already painted. And this is also a good moment to cover up any mistakes you've made 
you've hit the, the pants with a different color, you want to make sure it looks green, just add a little dot of this green paint all over it. And so the camo pattern is done. And you can see it is subtle, but you can still see it. And if you're painting stuff that's not so low on the mini, so not the pants, but the helmet and the jacket, it will really be visible on the tabletop too. Just make sure you use bright, dark colors like the dark brown, dark green, and a good dark Zandri dust for the sort of tan colors. Otherwise, they just don't stand out and the whole camo pattern blends and you don't really see much anymore. Now, I went through this one and I also gave this guy over here a camo pattern on the armor. And let's see, where is he? That's him. I gave him camo pants as well and the cloth uh, that is covering his face as well. It's really time consuming to do this. I really would not recommend doing this on 60 infantrymen. Maybe just little pieces like I've done here or your Kasserkin, you know, your elite troops, the Militarm Tempestus, they are great targets for this. Taking a little bit more time and painting some camo. Now, I'm going to continue with making the greens and the browns and the tan look slightly different from each other. I still want to make sure that it doesn't all read like the same green, it doesn't all read like the same brown. And for that, I've got here non-oil, Agrax Earth Shade and Athonian Camo Shade. And these three washes, I'm going to apply them on the, the, the different base colors. But I'm using different washes for the same base colors on different minis. So let me explain that for a second. Over here, this guy has a brown backpack. This guy has a brown jacket. So one I'm going to wash with non-oil and the other one I'm going to wash with Agrax Earthshade. It will be subtle, but it will give slight differences in how the shading on these pieces look. And it'll make the, the material look different. It will make it look as if it's not all coming from the same factory. That's what I'm trying to, uh, to achieve here, is make these, uh, these bits of gear that they have sort of cobbled together from different squads, different bodies maybe on the, on the ground. Uh, they, they have supply issues, so they just use whatever they can get without concern for how it looks. So let's start with this guy. Since he has black armor, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade on him because if I use non-oil here, it probably gets too dark and it blends a bit together. Uh, so Agrax Earthshade for him. And I use a lot. I always use a lot when I use my washes. I quite like this pronounced effect and I don't really mind the pooling of washes when you use so much. I think it adds a bit of character too as long as it's not too bad and it's not too visible that it's just a pool of a wash. And then this guy, he has mostly greens here on his armor and green pants, so I'm going to make his jacket look a bit darker by using non-oil on it. And it will turn it a different shade of brown than the one I washed with Agrax Earthshade. And I'll keep going like this all over the miniatures using the three washes. And for the tan, I'm going to use some Seraphim Sepia as well, just to make different shading everywhere. With the washes done, I'm kind of surprised at how neat I worked, because I don't really have to touch up on the skin. Instead, I'm just going to take some Gilliman Flesh and some Contrast Wildwood and paint in the skin. The Gilliman Flesh is great for pale skin, like mine, and the Contrast Wildwood is good for darker skin. And I'm only using these two. There's a couple more skin, like Fire Slayer skin and Dark Oath Flesh, but I feel that using less paints is usually better than using more, so I'm just sticking with these two. And the difference between the two is clear enough that you have clearly different skin tones in your army without having to buy another two or three pots of paint. Time for a bit of basing material before I get to griming and dirtying everything up, because then I can do the base at the same time. So I got some Sterling mud here and I'm gonna just put a little layer all over the base. And the idea is to make this as thin as possible so it dries quickly and you can just continue working. And then we'll wash everything and start griming up the minis as well. Now for arguably the most fun part of painting minis, griming them up and making them look like they've been in battle for a while already. So I got a bit of Rhinox hide here and I'm just gonna dry brush very lightly upwards against the boots that these guys are wearing. And I use Rhinox Hide because it's pretty much the same color as the base, the, uh, the Sterling Mud. And this way it'll look like they've been walking through this mud for a while and it's been kicked up onto their boots, onto their pants. And it'll make them look like they've been in combat instead of just walking off the parade ground. 
so now you can see the boots here are a little bit dirtier and it looks like he's been walking through the same dirt for a while and not just walking out of his barracks time for a little bit of blood now of course astro militarum the guard regiments they're not meant to get into close combat so you're not going to get massive wounds or blood splatter on their swords like you would have with space marines but it is still fun to add a little bit of story to these minis for example this guy over here let's say he has been too close to a massive explosion and one of his eardrums popped or maybe he got hit in the face by a bit of shrapnel or rock so let's just add a little bit of blood there and make sure it trickles down onto his vest as well and that way you just get a little bit of story like this guy's been walking around already he got cut or hit by something it's not a debilitating wound because you know they're just regular human beings so he would not be on the battlefield anymore but you get a little bit of story and over here i got a guy who has short sleeves and i'm just going to add a little bit of blood to his wrist over here let's say he also got a cut or he touched something somebody that was bleeding already and just have it trickle down his pinky over there right there and for me this is enough i'm not going to paint a lot of blood on a whole squad of guard just little details that tell a little bit of a story and then after finishing the base with a wash of non oil and some grass tufts this is what they look like and i think they look cool i think this tells a lot more story than having every mini look exactly the same you have different guys wearing different gear coming from different regiments maybe just trying to survive and trying to cobble together whatever equipment they can get and keep going now, on the other hand, if you just like your minis all painted the exact same way, check out my other video about painting Cadian with just contrast paint and a little bit of dry brush. It's very easy to follow along. With less than 10 paints, you can have a 10-man, even a 20-man squad done every evening without any trouble.